Hello and welcome to Spitting the Truth, my second episode of this series that I want to do. I'm the Sports Guru 716, also known as Andy, and I hope you enjoy this episode. I'm going to talk about Jonathan Druin and my opinion on him. The key to Spitting the Truth and why it seems to be a little bit different than many other you know, rants that people go on, it is the truth. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to BS you. This is going to be my real opinion. And comment below if you disagree, and we can argue in the comments, or, you know, maybe we agree. Post if you agree. Also, if you believe that you have a good idea for me to discuss on this uh, series, please post below, and I will consider it, and I may even do it the next day. I don't know. So, background on Jonathan Gruen. He was the third overall pick for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He has played 89 games and has six goals, okay? Now, he has a lot of points. He has quite a bit of assists, but at the same time, out of his current draft class, he is the only player of the top 10 in his draft class to not be currently in the NHL. Now, this is due in part to him. He has demanded a trade from Tampa Bay, a team that went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year, and would like to be traded out because he's not getting enough playing time in his opinion. This is one of my problems. The kid is 20 years old. The team is a Stanley Cup Finals caliber hockey team. This is not a garbage team. This isn't the Phoenix Coyotes back when they had Kyle Turris. This isn't a situation where, oh, I'm not getting any playing time and my team sucks. No, your team is really good. You know, you're not good enough to make the top six of this very good hockey team. Now, you have the right to demand a trade. I may not agree with it, and I don't agree with it. I think that he's being a piss pot for wanting to be traded when he's only 20 years old and has six goals in 89 games. If you're going to be a top overall pick, you better be scoring more than six goals in, nine, in 89 games. That's not enough. That's not enough. I don't care who you're playing with. If you can score 50 goals in juniors... You can surely score more than six goals in a season's worth of hockey in the NHL. And I know you're young, and that is what the point. He's a young hockey player that needs to develop, and the best way to develop is in the American Hockey League. So they send him down to the American Hockey League. Now, this is not the first time John Cooper has done something like this with a player. Nikita Kucherov also was put through this same ringer a couple seasons ago. His play defensively was not responsible enough. John Cooper, the head coach, benched Nikita Kucherov. He also made sure that he learned how to play two-way hockey. Now, Druin's numbers are okay. They're actually pretty good for possession numbers, according to Corsi and things like that. But yet, he still is not a player that is putting the puck in the net on a regular basis. That does not warrant a top six role. If you can't put the puck in the net on a regular basis, why would I put you in my top six? That's where players at score go. So that's my opinion on that. Now, what happens next? He gets sent down. Now, if he plays well and he's sent down, I personally, I believe that he deserves to come back up. And at that point, I believe he should be in the NHL. If you can succeed at the American Hockey League level, you have graduated from the American Hockey League level. But he had three points in seven games. That is not an NHL hockey player in the AHL. That is a young prospect that's promising in the American Hockey League trying to make his way. I'd also like to talk about how he's played seven games in I don't know if his agent is behind this or if this is him, but he's also responsible for what his agent does. His agent doesn't get to do whatever he wants without asking Druin first. Now, Druin is not playing hockey. He said, I'm not playing anymore until you trade me. Now, this is something new. Not many players are going to say, I'm not playing for you when you're under contract. You signed a contract. You are... Signing a contract as an adult. Adults honor contracts. If an adult doesn't honor a contract, they shouldn't be in the profession. And frankly, 
if I'm Tampa Bay, I look at this guy and he's not even showing up, so they suspend him without pay. That is completely understandable. And in my opinion, I would let him sit there still. I wouldn't even trade him now. I would wait until he... I, I'd let him sit without pay until he comes back because he needs the money. Because now Tampa Bay is going to have trouble trading him. Because now, see, this is where Jonathan Druin also screwed himself. Because he has caused a situation where a big, a big red flag is now on Jonathan Druin across the whole league. Across the whole league. Like, if I'm another team and I was kind of interested in Jonathan Druin, I'm like, okay, he's a young player demanding a trade. It's kind of could be taken wrongly. But now that he's not playing, they're going to be like, that kid is not somebody I want on my hockey team. He doesn't honor his contracts. It doesn't matter if you demand a trade. You honor your contract. You be a grown-up about the situation. Steve Eiserman doesn't have to trade you. He has the right to your NHL. You know, he has the rights to your your career for the next two years. There's nothing you can do. You can't, you're not going to be allowed to do anything about it. And in my opinion, you, it's, it's tough, tough, you know, tough crap. you got to play. And he's not playing. And I think that's really, you know, immature. I think he feels entitled. I think because he was in juniors and he was good that he thinks he deserves a top six role, but he has six goals. And then he gets sent down to the Syracuse Crunch and scores two and seven. That's still not good enough. That's not an NHL hockey player. That is a kid that's growing and developing. Now he feels his development's being stunted because he's in the AHL. Well, you scored. You, you were up in the NHL for the majority of last season. You scored six goals. You have 89 career NHL games. So what? You're not playing with Steven Stamkos. You know what? You're not good enough to play with Steven Stamkos today. You're not. Obviously, you're not. This team is a Stanley Cup Finals team. And in my opinion, I hope, you know, if you disagree with me, comment below how you feel about this. If you think that I, some of my uh, reasoning is misplaced. But I think this kid needs to understand something. This is the National Hockey League, and you're on a team that could win a Stanley Cup. And you are trying to be traded from a team that can win the Stanley Cup. Like, is playing time more important than you to you? Is playing time more important to you because this is this is the thing. Like, you it you must consider playing time more important than a championship. Otherwise, you'd stay, and you'd provide that Corsi and possession numbers to your team on a third or fourth line role because you have excelled at that role. Now you're not going to be a possession player for the next 10 years. I understand that. But at the same time, he has a role on this hockey team if he's willing to have it. But he doesn't want it. He wants a top six role. And frankly, there's no space for that in Tampa Bay. And that's where you're right. You could be tra You could ask to be traded because you're like, oh, I want to be this. Well, you haven't proven it to anybody besides in juniors. So, I guess if I get what you were worth a third overall pick, if I can get what's worth a third overall pick, I'll trade you. And Steve Eisenman didn't get it yet. So, the agent was like, you told me a trade was imminent. And I've already read on Twitter through uh, TSN or ESPN, a GM had told one of the uh, reporters, no GM in NHL history would have told that to an agent. Nobody would tell him, we're about to trade you. They don't tell you until you, they have. Or they're just signing the papers. So this guy, this agent, Alan Walsh, is full of crap. And not to mention that, he's hurting this kid. Because I saw Corey Hirsch on Twitter. I got Corey Hirsch on Twitter, too. Goalie was in Vancouver, 97-98. He said, my biggest regret I ever made in my career was holding out in Vancouver in the training camp of 97-98. I thought I was better than I was. And it left me with a reputation that I had to shake my whole career. Eric Lindros isn't in the Hall of Fame. He has numbers worthy of the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. And I think part of why he's not in the Hall of Fame is because he told the Nordiques, I'm not playing for you. And because of that, you may have costed yourself a chance in history as a Hall of Famer. And I don't think Jonathan Druin wants to go down this path. 
And a lot of people want to say that. This kid, if he is good, everybody will forget about it. Nobody that watches hockey and pays attention to hockey is going to forget the time Jonathan Druin, even 20 years old, demanded a trade out of Tampa and didn't play to get the trade done. Nobody does that when they're still under contract. Kyle Turris did it. He didn't have a contract, I don't believe. Ryan O'Reilly considered it. He didn't have a... Actually, I don't think he played. He didn't have a contract. These players that you, you can hold out when you don't have a contract, be like, I'm not playing. This isn't the NFL where this happens. And I just want to... I just, my last little thing here that I think is kind of ironic. I saw a Jonathan Druin tweet from 2013. Somebody had retweeted it. It says something to the effect of, I guess Kovalchuk does what he wants. And this was just the day, I think, that Kovalchuk decided, Ilya Kovalchuk, a point-per-game player, decided the KHL was a better option for him. And this tweet was not a tweet that looked like it was a happy tweet. It looked like a tweet like, wow, this guy just did that. What a scumbag. Well, Jonathan Druin, you, uh, you don't look too different with the exception of age right now when you're demanding a trade and not playing in the National Hockey League. So, you know, you should uh, really, you should really... Get over yourself, grow up, and try and win a championship because that's what you can do with this team. And that's how you rebuild your reputation. You do well in the AHL. That's how you rebuild your reputation. You make yourself something somebody wants. So thank you for watching my second episode of Spitting the Truth. This episode was about Jonathan Drew, and I hope you enjoyed it. Comment below with any thoughts or opinions and give me any future topics that you'd like me to discuss. I have uh, an opinion on everything pretty much, so I will tell you the truth, and I will not sugarcoat it. I'm not trying to use too much vulgar language because I don't want this to get age-gated, but, you know, that is what it is. So subscribe, share, like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, comment below what I should work on to make it better.